Hello ladies and gentlemen. Okay, today we are going to cover um, chromosome structure and the mitotic system. There are two types of cells in a human being. There are somatic cells which make up the body and they reproduce by mitosis. Humans have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes in their somatic cells. Gametic cells are also known as the sex cells. They are the sperm and egg in humans, but they could be pollen and ovules and plants and other things. They reproduce through a process called meiosis, which we will cover in the next lecture. And each has 23 chromosomes, so it has half the number as a somatic cell. Homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that match in structure with the exception of the sex chromosomes in a human male. They are each member of a numbered pair of chromosomes. So each member of the chromosome, 15 for example, are homo homologs of the other. One homolog is inher inherited from the mother and the other homolog is inherited from the father. The chromatid is the length of DNA that is coiled tightly. Sister chromatids are held together by a centromere. And that's what I'm showing you on the drawing here. Chromosomes are composed of sister chromatids when they are getting ready to enter cell division. The centromeres are protein complexes that hold the sister chromatids tightly together prior to division. A diploid or 2N, as in Nancy, 2N cell is the complement of chromosomes found in zygotes and in som somatic cells. In humans, the diploid number is 46. Haploid, or 1N, is the complement of chromosomes found in gametes. In humans, the haploid total is 23. Haploid cells have to be haploid because when you get them together, you get a sperm and an egg together, it produces a zygote. That process is called fertilization. And basically, you don't want the zygote to have more chromosomes than a normal somatic cell, so you have to half the number before you produce the sperm and egg. So that's some basic vocabulary. Let's talk about mitosis. Mitosis happens all the time in your body. Um, it can happen to repair damaged tissue, growth, or metabolic requirements. And what I mean by that is when the cell surface area to volume ratio becomes too small, there isn't enough surface area to allow for efficient diffusion and transport of raw materials and waste products. And so the cell divides in order to prevent that from happening. The cell is a dynamic structure that is constantly trying to keep up with the changes in its environment or to maintain homeostasis. The first part of the cell cycle is called the interphase. Interphase used to be called the resting stage of the cell because it looked like there wasn't anything going on in the cell while looking at it under a microscope. These are all interphase cells. Well, almost all of them. During interphase, the cell is carrying out its everyday activities. This part of the interphase is called the G1 or GAP1 phase. It may last several days or over a hundred years, depending on the type of cell we're talking about. When the surface area to volume ratio imbalance occurs, the S or synthesis phase begins. During the S phase, the genetic material, which is DNA, replicates itself, which means it makes a copy. This allows the cell to contain enough material to fully supply two cells upon division. After the S phase completes, the cell moves into the GAP2 or G2 phase. At this point, the cell's organelles are duplicated so that enough will be available to be appropriately distributed in the resulting daughter cells. So it's not resting at all. So now we're going to cover the four phases of mitosis, and I put on the slide, this is where we stop the clock when significant changes happen in the cell. We actually do stop the clock when we look at these under a microscope. We add a poison called colchicine, and that poison causes the cell to immediately stop what it's doing no matter what it's doing. And so it's freezing the, it's freezing the, the chromosome movement in time, and so you can actually see them. 
Remember the, the three differences in cells. Animal cells have centrioles, which will be involved in moving the chromosomes around, and plant cells don't, but the chromosomes still move. <laughs> and plant cells have a cell plate, and animal cells don't. Now when I show you these pictures, I'm going to show you in plant cells um, because they're easier to see, uh, but it looks very similar when we look at animal cells. Okay, this is a prophase cell. During the prophase, um, the nucleus membrane disappears and the chromatin begins to condense into chromosomes, so we can start to see it. Chromosome just means colored body and they were named that because they would pick up the dyes that we use to stain cells um, much, much better. In later prophase, the nuclear envelope is, dis is gone and the spindle fibers begin to form. In animal cells, the centrioles will have migrated to the poles of the cell. Now here's one that's an animal shell showing you where the centrioles are located. So if you take a look inside of the little, um, not the dark chromosomes in the middle, but over to the side where the spindles are going toward, the chromosomes are in the center of those, that mass of protein tubules. Metaphase begins when the chromatid pairs line up along the center of the cell. This makes it possible for the chromosome, uh, chromatids to position themselves so that they can migrate accurately to the opposite sides of the cell. Chromosomes are most tightly condensed at this stage. The chromatids then separate and migrate toward the poles during anaphase. The spindle fibers contract and pull them along. Telophase begins after the chromosomes have arrived at the poles and the nuclear membranes begin to reform. The spindle fibers have also disappeared at this stage and the cell plate begins to form in plants. And you can see the cell plate uh, formation here. Cytokinesis is the point at which the parent cell splits into two actual daughter cells. In plant cells like this one, it's formed from the cell plate. But in animal cells, it results from a pinching in of the membrane until it, it pops apart. The daughter cells that come from mitosis are smaller than the parent cell and immediately go into the GAP1 or G1 of interphase following cytokinesis. Daughter cells are diploid, 2N. They are actually um, duplicate clones of the parent cell. Okay, so here's some plant cells and I want you to name the phase. So I'm going to move the, mu the mouse around and hopefully this will scan. So here's one, and I want you to name this phase. You should have said that was an interphase cell, or I mean a prophase cell, because you can see the chromosome starting to unwind, but it's early prophase because you can still see the nucleolus. Differently here, this is a late anaphase cell because you can see that the, they've reached the poles but they haven't started to reform the nucleus. But they have in this one because in this one you can start to see the rounded nuclear membrane forming. So this is a prof, uh, telophase cell. In this one right here, this is metaphase but it's early metaphase. It's prophase going into metaphase. And I can tell that because it's starting to form along the middle. This is very definitely a metaphase cell. This one is early anaphase. And you can tell the difference because, from metaphase because the chromatids start to look like V's at this point. So they're starting to pull apart. And here's a later anaphase cell. Okay, so now you're going to do it. I'm going to point out ones on this slide. This is animal cells, and I want you to name them. I'm not going to say anything. Okay, so here's number one. Number two.
number three. Number four. And number five. We'll give you a hint though that there were absolutely no telophase um, on that uh, on that slide. Okay, so that concludes the mitosis lecture, and I hope that you have practiced on this material. If you have any questions, see me during office hours or send me an email. Have a good day.